Hey there folks, I'm Sensei Chris Diamond and welcome to our fourth video in this series of introducing you to karate. Um, now today we're going to be covering a slightly more athletic technique and also we'll be practicing a couple of different ways of tripping somebody up and making them fall down onto the ground which can be very useful in a self-defense situation. Uh, we're also going to cover how we can fall down and not get injured in the process as well, which can be extremely useful in a self-defense situation, as well as just in general life. Um, and we're going to go through a more efficient way, a smarter way of standing up as well, um, which is very useful in a self-defense situation as well, um, as well as a quick recap of all of the things that we've covered in the, all of the other videos up to this point. So, um, just a quick reminder, uh, about being sensible with everything. Now, a couple of the techniques we are gonna go through today are gonna be slightly more dangerous than some of the other ones that we have covered. So it's extra important that you are sensible with this. Um, you might find that you might need to clear a little bit of space and make sure that you don't have any obstacles in the way. Be careful of people and dogs and desks and things like that around you. Make sure you've got some space. Uh, you might also need to have a fairly soft surface to practice falling down on a little bit later. I've got these karate mats. If you've got something like these, um, that's perfect. If not, things like pillows, cushions, soft toys, dunas, blankets, something soft. Doing it on carpet is probably gonna be a better idea than doing it on a hard floor. Um, it shouldn't matter. If you do the technique correctly, you can do this falling down on hard floors. You can do it on concrete and you still don't get damaged. But for learning the process, it's feels much safer and it's less stressful landing on something soft. And if you do make a little bit of a mistake, if you're landing on something soft, you're not gonna injure yourself in the process. So, let's get underway. So, as always, we need to say hello to one another. So we start with a bow and we say, us, all together go, us. And then we need to warm up a little bit. So, can we come back to that shoulder bit stance and we'll do what we've been doing in the other videos, just loosening up with our big circles with your arms. Backwards. And then one goes forward, one goes backwards. And change. That's a little bit difficult. See what you can do. And then we twist our body. And hands on the hips, hip involved. And the other way. We have our hands out in front, and then you want to kick your foot up to touch your hand. This will help to loosen up your hip joint a little bit. One foot, other foot. And then a little bounces. And then can you have one foot in front as you're bouncing? And then tap this front foot on the ground, tap, knee rise, tap, knee rise, tap, knee rise. And then switch, have the other foot in front, and tap, knee rise. We try a couple of push-ups again. Now there's a multitude of different ways of doing push-ups. Can we try a slightly different one to what we've done in the other videos? Again, if you can have your hands underneath your shoulders, and when you come down, if those elbows stay right next to your body, that's good. You can have your arms a little bit wider as well if you need to, but give it a shot, see how you go with keeping your elbows in. Can we try walking push-ups this time? So again, we wanna keep our back and our legs straight. You don't want to have this mountain backside, so you look like a mountain, that's not great. And you don't want to have banana back, that's really bad. So keep back straight like this. We're going to do a push up and then take a step to the side. Another push up and step back to where we can. Okay, can we try six of those, please? So one push up. Step to the side, two, step to the side, three, step to the side, four, step to the 
side. Try and keep back straight. Five. And last one, six. And step to the side. And then up we go. So then, now, can we please also try a couple of extra things just for loosening up? But we are going to practice those falling down kind of techniques. So it's important to loosen up your neck muscles a little bit. It is going to be a bit of a jolt for your neck. Ordinarily in a fight sort of situation, it might fall down. But hopefully you're only going to fall down once. So it shouldn't be too big a jolt for your neck. If you know how to do the technique correctly, then you should be able to protect your neck quite well. Uh, in a training session, you might fall down multiple times though. So it's going to be a bit of a jolt for your neck. If you loosen it up, should be all fine. So just try quickly. We look up. Go and keep your mouth closed. And look down. And again, up. And down. And up. And down. And then come back to the middle. This ear down to this shoulder. And then we change. If you want to increase the stretch, when we go over to this side, the opposite hand push down towards the floor. And then you change. You can push down to the floor with the opposite hand. Change one more time each side. And change. And then one more maneuver. Can we look over our shoulder? So you're turning your head. And then we change. Hopefully we don't have any owls who can go the whole way around. Change. Change one more time each side. And relax. There we go. All right, now one more thing. Now I did say we were gonna do a slightly more athletic kind of technique. So we need to warm up our legs a little bit as well. So can we start with one foot in front in that Montalati, our fighting stance, so knees are bent, and we're gonna do the leg raises. So this leg comes up, swing straight up like that. Then on the second one, we do that crescent kick. So a circle, this one comes across your body and out to the side in a nice big circle. And then we do it the other way. So this one comes out to the side and around this way. Can we try those three one more time? So lift straight up to the front. Then we go across our body first, and then we go out to the side first. Then we try it again to the front, across your body, out to the side. And then change legs, we'll try three on this side. So we go to the front, across your body first, out to the edge first. To the front, across your body, to the side. And one more time, to the front, across your body, and to the side. And relax. All right. Now, karate can be used for a multitude of different things. Uh, I and other instructors are not in charge of why you do karate. So there are multiple benefits you're going to get from the training, but some of you might be interested mostly in being able to defend yourself. So you would approach your training from that kind of standpoint. Some of you might be interested in using it as a vehicle for self-improvement. So improving all of your, the, your traits, so your balance, your flexibility, your posture, your breathing, the uh, fitness, right, and flexibility, all of these different things, as well as during your karate training, you'll be put under pressure and into difficult situations. And so you build a lot of resilience as well from this uh, sort of training. So it's going to uh, work as a, a method for improving your character as well over the years. So, but that does take a lot of time. Um, some people look at this more as a sport. So for fitness, for coordination, for, for fun basically. And some people then take it to the next level and turn it into competition. Now with all of these different things, some of the techniques go for very utilitarian and it's very simple kind of movements. Some are more athletic. So I want you to try one of the more athletic kind of moves today. Um, it's a pretty famous kind of technique is a roundhouse kick. Okay? A roundhouse kick is it's a little bit difficult to perform. So hopefully our legs are still a little bit warm from those rotations. Now we'll go through it in stages. If you start with your favorite leg back, okay, whichever leg it is, it doesn't matter which one. 
You want to have your knees bent and have your hands up. Hands up helps for balance and defense. Uh, it will uh, also help with your recovery afterwards as well if you're keeping it up. Okay, so we want to try and keep our hands up here. Now, I'll do one roundhouse kick first. I won't do it very high because you can do this to multiple different levels. Okay, if you're going to use this in a competition setting, you'd want to do the kick up to the head. That scores you more points. For a self-defense sort of situation, it would generally be done to the ribs or lower. You can do it to the groin, you can do it to the legs, to the knees, even down to the shins and ankles as well. Okay, so I'll do one about halfway. This leg comes around in a circle and comes back like that. Okay, so it comes round house, around like that. Now we're gonna break it down into little bits. Okay, let's just start with the back leg coming straight up to the side. This way and down. That's it. Try that three times. One, and come up and down. Two, up and down. And three. Okay, the next part is the most important part of the kick. So we get our knee to come up, but then turn. You've got to turn that supporting foot. The one that you're standing on twists. Now, really important piece of advice, try and turn on the ball of the foot. Try not to turn on your heel. Okay, if you turn on the ball of your foot, you can keep your knee bent and you're gonna be able to turn much more effectively. If you turn on your heel, you're more likely to grip and then you're twisting your knee, which is bad news. Your knees like to bend like this. They're designed to do that for a long time. They don't like twisting. Okay, so bend your knee and turn ball the foot, much happier knees. It's much easier to twist as well. Okay, it should mean that your weight stays low, you stay balanced, you don't fall backwards. Okay, now, give it a try. It's going to be knee up, but then as soon as your knee comes up, twist. Okay, that's all we have to do. Try the knee up and the twist. You ready? One. And then we come back. Two, knee up, twist. And then we come back. Three. And try one more. Now hopefully you can see my knee pointing straight towards the front here. That's where we want it to point. We don't want it to go past center line. If I point my knee there, my kick's gonna go there. If I point my knee there, my kick's gonna go there. Try one more, four. And knee, four. Straight forward like that. Now, we've only got one part, well, a couple of parts to add. Now here, kick out and back. So we're gonna add the kick portion. We still want knee up, we still want pivot. Pointing your knee to the front, kick and pull back, and then we recover back to here. So give it a try, try the entire kick. Ready, one, knee out, turn, kick and pull back, and then we recover back. Try again, two, and three. Okay, now, the other thing, last thing I'm gonna mention is about the foot position. So what you do with your foot, you've actually got a couple of choices with this. Depends on your target. Generally, kicking to the head, you would do this. You would point your toes, so you're gonna hit with the top part of your foot and the top part of your ankle. We call that the instep, right? the top part of your foot there. It's gonna be easier to kick higher, kicking with that part of the foot, and your target would be up here to the head. Okay. Very dangerous kind of technique to do in a self-defense sort of situation. Generally, that would be better suited to a competition kind of setting. You'll generally turn to score three points for a kick to the head, as opposed to just one point for a punch. So it's a very popular technique in tournaments. If we're targeting the body though, then you could point your toes, but you'd probably be aiming to hit more with your shin. It's like a baseball bat going into the body. Okay, the other part you could use is the ball of the foot. That takes a bit more training to get used to, but if you pull your toes back and you hit with the ball of the foot, it's like a hammer going into the ribs. So you could either point your toes like that, okay, or you can pull your toes back like that, or, okay, to do the kick. And it's good to try it both ways. If you were gonna use this for a tournament, competition kind of setting, you'd wanna do toes pointed, because you can hit with the instep, and to the body, that'll be less damaging. You're still gonna score points, but you're not gonna damage your opponent and get uh, disqualified from the tournament. If you hit with the ball of the foot, you're more likely to damage them, so that's more geared towards self-defense. Okay, so you ready? Now we're gonna try the entire kick. So think about the foot position as well. Knee up, turn, kick, and recover all the way back. Ready, one. Kick, and recover all the way back. Two. 
Really make sure you turn that foot. That's the most important part. Three, four, and five. Okay, now it's good to practice to one level, get comfortable with that, and then you can change the levels as well. Pretty much, if you want to kick higher, you need to aim your knee higher. Don't think about your foot, think about your knee. And in order to get it higher, you'll need to turn this foot more. So if I'm turning 90 degrees to kick to this level, to kick higher, I need to lift my knee higher, so I need to turn my bottom foot more as well. Okay, that's going to make a uh, lot easier for my hip joint, and it puts less strain on having that flexibility with your inner thigh muscles. So if you are gonna try this kick higher, make sure you warm up first, okay? Until you've got years of practice of this, it's gonna be difficult to kick high without warming up at all, okay? So really try and turn the bottom foot, aim the knee higher, and then you'll be able to aim the kick higher. A lot of the time, as I mentioned before, you'd wanna do this kick down low as well, into the legs, into the groin, into the knees, the nasty stuff. Okay, that, you just aim your knee lower. But otherwise, exactly the same kind of technique. Boom, but just aiming for a lower target. Okay, now we are, we've only practiced one side. I would highly advise, boom, switch, and you try it off the other foot as well. All of the same rules apply. You're probably gonna find one foot is more comfortable than the other. Okay, so just for the purposes of this video today, we'll cover one foot, but it's not a terrible idea to press pause or even rewind back and repeat the exercise on the other side of your body as well, okay? All right, now, uh, now that was the roundhouse kick. In Japanese, we would call that mawashi geri. Mawashi means round, geri means kick. Um, but the next thing we're gonna cover is break falls. Now, break falls are really useful in a self-defense situation or just in general life. I don't know about you, but when I was at school, I used to fall over a lot. Even before I learned how to do karate, before I started training, I fell backwards at school once, and I fell out like this, and I put my hands back to stop myself, which is a very natural response. It's called fall on outstretched hand, or fush. And it's a terrible idea, because when you fall down, it's automatic, and it's your brain saying, protect all the stuff that keeps you alive. So your brain, your heart, your lungs, your liver, your spine, all the super important stuff. Your arms, apparently aren't that important. So you chuck them out to stop you, but a lot of the time, you'll end up breaking your arm, like I did when I was eight, before I did karate. Now, if you know how to do a break fall, you still protect all of those things that keep you alive, and you protect your arms as well. It's a smarter way of falling down. Okay? Now, so, a couple of things, there's a couple of golden rules. Now, you can't break these rules, not because I'll get grumpy, because you'll get injured, okay? So firstly, try and make sure you've got a soft surface on which to fall. Um, but then, we need to make sure that we go splat, okay? The idea of going splat is to spread the force out over a larger area. If I land like this, all of the energy is going down towards the ground, and my arm is the only thing stopping that energy. If it's too much energy, ah, I break my arm. If I go splat, it's everything absorbing the same amount of energy. So there's a little bit, 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 all over. And so you spread it out so it's less impact on your body. Okay, if you haven't done one of these before, it will be a little bit scary. Okay, it will be a little bit of impact. But if you adhere to the rules, you'll be totally fine. Now, I'll show you one. If I go side on, this is what one looks like. Like that. So normally, if you haven't done or seen one of those before, most people go, oh, because it sounds really scary, but it's not that scary. And so the first thing, first golden rule that you can't break is your head does not touch the floor, okay? That, you can't break that rule. Now, on these soft, squishy mats, if I break that rule and I go break for crunch, and I whack my head into the floor, ow, it's going to hurt. Hey, it's gonna rattle my brains a little bit. It's probably gonna give me a headache, but I'm not gonna be permanently damaged on the soft surface, okay? If I did it on concrete though, I'm gonna be in a little bit more trouble. So it's really important that you keep your head off the floor. This is part of why we loosened up our neck. So if you're feeling it's a little stiff, you can just give a little bit of a stretch, loosen it up again. But that's golden rule number one, head doesn't touch the floor. Golden rule number two, arms straight. 
Okay, you don't want to land with your arms bent. What most people will do is they'll go, oh, I've got to keep my head off the floor. Okay, I'll land like this. Now, with my arms bent like this, my back isn't absorbing any of the shock. The only thing absorbing the shock is my elbows. So what breaks? My elbows. And sometimes I'll break my collarbone or I'll even dislocate my shoulder as well. Good times. But if I land down here, boom, arms straight, like this, everything absorbs the shock all at once. So you head off the ground and arms down by your side. You can do up a little bit, but you don't want to be all the way up here like Jesus, okay? If you're up here, it's harder to keep your chin on your chest and you're more likely to hit the bony part of your elbow into the floor, okay? So if, can everybody start like this, lying flat on your back, but head off the floor, arms are up like this. All you need to do, when I say go, is go splat, okay? Get ready, good set, and go. Splat with the arms. Try again, ready, go. And try one more time, ready, go. And then we sit up. So now from here, we're gonna go splat. So we wanna get our body and our arms at the same time, like this. Don't do this. Definitely don't do this. That's just silly. Okay, but we want body and arms same time. We'll try this three times as well. Remember, head off the ground. Ready, set, go. Splat. And then we sit back up again, try it again. Ready, go. And sit back up again, try one more time. Ready, go. Splat. Now, we need to come up a little bit. Now, we're gonna come to a squatting position. So if we start in this squatting position here, oh, now from here, this is gonna be a little bit scarier. This is gonna feel like you're falling because you're falling, but you're not falling very far. Because I'm all the way down here, I'm only falling that small distance. I need to do all of the same things all over again. Fall back and splat. Try and get your back and your arms to go at the same time. Ready? And making sure to keep your head off the floor. Get ready, give it a try. So we've got arms out here. If you start with your arms out here, you're less likely to drive the elbows back and land on them. Get ready and go. And if your legs come up in the air, who cares? Doesn't matter. Try that again. You come back to squatting position. Ready, set, go. And then we come back and try it one more time. Ready, set, and go. All right. So now we need to stand up. Oh, now, one thing I sh probably should have mentioned at the start, I wouldn't advise doing this on your bed, okay? We're gonna fall a little bit faster this time. Lots of people go, ooh, soft surface, my bed's nice and soft. The only problem is, often you fall on your bed and then you bounce straight off your bed and land on the floor. So I wouldn't advise the bed, I'd advise, I'd advise something already on the floor. So carpet and pillows and cushions and soft toys and doomers and things like that, nice soft stuff. Uh, but now we have to try from standing up. Now if you are falling down and you can't stop yourself, you're out of control, you are gonna fall, a lot of the time you can arrest the fall a little bit, you can slow it down. So if I am going backwards, uh oh I'm gonna fall over, I might not be able to stop it, but I can bob down. And it takes a lot of the pace out of the fall. Because if you fall from here, standing up, and you just go, wee, splat, like that, it's gonna be uncomfortable, it's gonna hurt. Even if you go splat, the way we've been talking about, it's still kind of uncomfortable. You shouldn't break anything, but it's not fun. Okay, if you bob down, you're not falling this far, you're falling this far, less splat. Okay, so first thing we do is bob down. Get ready, get set. As you bob, hands come out in front, just like before. Ready, go. Hands out, roll back. <laughs> and fall down. And then we stand back up again. Try that again, ready, and go. And we hop back up, and we try it one more time, but remember the golden rules. Head does not touch the floor, arms straight. Ready, and go. Now, from this position, we need to think, if we are having to use a break fall in a self-defense situation, it's probably because I've been tripped up, pushed over. I'm now in a very disadvantageous position. I'm not in a good spot. If I can use my punching bag over here as my opponent, 
just have to use our imagination. And this guy here has just tripped me over. Okay, now if I do fall backwards, first stage is this. I've fallen over, I haven't been damaged. From this position, it's not a good position, but there's stuff I can do. I can be very annoying with my legs from this position, kicking up with your heels into a person's legs, groin, face, can be quite powerful and painful. So I can keep the person at bay a little bit, but I don't want to be here for very long because if the person manages to get around to the sides, now I'm in a lot of trouble. There's a lot more nasty stuff they can do to me then. Now, when I stand up, most people will stand up normally. So if I've fallen from here, see where my opponent is? If I stand up normally, uh-oh, see where my opponent is? I'm right here. There's no way they're gonna let me do this. They're gonna start pushing me down and hitting me again. So this is dangerous. I wanna stand up, moving backwards away from the person. So this is from here. Once we've done our break fall, I want you to try something called a technical stand up. So first thing, bring one hand up to protect your head. Okay? Now, if this is my right hand up, my right foot is gonna stay on the floor. My left hand is gonna come up behind me like this. Okay, now the next thing is the trickiest part. I'm gonna lift my backside up off the floor as well as my left foot. See this, I've got right leg, and left hand supporting me. In this position, this foot now needs to go underneath my backside. And I can stand up getting away from the person rather than getting towards them. Okay, it leaves me with one hand up to potentially protect myself. Okay? It's just a smarter, safer way of standing up. So can we try again? So if you have the luxury of having an, either an opponent whether they're imaginary or inanimate, or maybe it's a real person. Okay? But having a marker like this is good. They push you down, and we do our break fall. Then the next thing, hand comes up. That means this foot's staying on the floor. If I do it on the other side, this hand comes up, this foot is staying on the floor. Then, other hand on the floor, lift up this foot underneath, and I can be standing up, getting away from them. Let's try that again. So we do our break fall first. Here, hand up, other hand back. Now with this, I'll show you one other tiny little thing. I'm gonna come up, as this foot goes under, try and skip this other foot back. So this one's going under, see the foot on the ground? Skip back. It gives you a little bit more distance, just a little bit faster. So if you can add that addition as well, that would be great. If you can't, don't stress. It's good to get used to the technique first, but that's like a little extension as well that you can try. Okay, let's try it two more times and then we'll move on. But so this time, can you try it once on the left side and once on the right side? Okay, so left side first, you ready? We break fall. So then the left hand comes up. Right hand on the ground, lift up, foot underneath, and stepping back. Then we come back and we try it again. And break fall. This time, right side. Right foot on the ground, right hand up, left hand on the floor, then up, skip back. Standing up, getting away from the person. Okay? Thank you very much, partner. All right, so now, really quickly, we want to go through a technique that we can use for tripping a person up, and us being the ones putting them on the ground. So for a self-defense situation, this is going to be a really useful skill to have in your arsenal. Um, if the person is standing up, they've got lots of powerful weapons they can use against you. If you trip them onto the floor, there's still a couple of things that you, they can do to you, but the situation is different. If I'm the one that falls down, my aggressor is likely to still keep attacking me, so I want to be doing those kicking things. If I'm the one protecting myself, as soon as I trip a person up, I don't want to attack them anymore. I want to run. I want to get out of there. Okay? And if they're on the ground and I'm already 20 metres down the road before they even think about standing up, that's a massive advantage for me being able to get away. 
So it's really quite useful. Now, uh, this will be best if you can try this on a person or a chair or an inanimate object like this. Okay. Now you can do this on something imaginary if you'd like. Okay. That's fine, it will still work, but on a person or a thing it's going to be better. So if I'm standing here, I want my right leg to go across my body. Okay? Or my left leg to go across my body, that way. Now when I step with my right leg that way, my right hand is going on the other side of the person. Okay? If I step left foot across, my left hand comes around this side of the person. Now, when we do this takedown, as I step, it's a good idea, see this, to kind of lean into them a little bit. So you're pushing your hip into them, that will destabilize them a little bit first before you try and take them down. So we step arm around, they're already off balance, then my leg pushes back. If I push back with the leg and forward with the arm, you can see where the person's going to go. Okay, they're going to fall down. Now, it's always best to practice this with somebody who knows how to do a break fall. So you can practice this multiple times. Your partner goes flat, they stand back up again. Your partner goes flat, they stand back up again. Nobody gets injured. But just make sure, again, you've got enough space and then you're falling on a safe surface. Okay, watch a couple more times. You can try it with me. Try it with me if you've got something that you can be doing here. Otherwise, Imagine the person here in front of you, and you're going to step behind, arm here, and you want to push with your hip to destabilize them. Leg goes back, and the arm comes forward to take the person down. Okay. Otherwise, if you've got a thing, try it one more time. We step across, and remember, on that step, you need to nudge them a little bit to destabilize. Leg goes back, arm comes across, and down they go. Bring back a little bit. Can we try this one more time? One more time? But there's absolutely no reason why you can't practice these more repetitions. Everything in karate, more repetitions, means more understanding and information retention. So we go across the body as you step, nudge with the hip. This one arm, leg goes back, arm goes across, and down the person goes. Okay, now this one we would call a reverse leg sweep. So you can do it from where we're doing it, already in close, person grabbing collar, very dangerous kind of situation, and you can step in to do that takedown. You can actually do it from a longer range as well. You might be able to skip up and do the takedown to the person as well. You can also do it as a reaction if the person moves towards you, and you can switch your feet to then be able to do the takedown. That one's a little bit more uh, dangerous and advanced, requires a lot more timing to be able to pull that one off, um, but it's certainly an option as well. There's multiple different ways of getting into that takedown, but if you're trying it, don't try and do most of it with your upper body. Try and do most of it with your lower body. If you get the legs out from underneath, doesn't require much push with the arm and down that'll go. But if you're here argh, trying to work really hard with your upper body, if your legs are still stable, you're not going to make them fall down, especially not if they're bigger than you. So try and get them destabilized, use the legs, and it only needs a little bit of a push with the arm. Okay, now uh, that's uh, pretty much all the time we have to go over new stuff. I wanted to go through a really fast, quick recap. So this will be machine gun pace of all of the things that we've covered in all of the videos. So if we can remember, the first thing is this shoulder width stance. So we go hands, heels and hands into the shoulder width stance with a strong base. The basic punches, so hands open, bring fingers in, thumb on the top, one hand out, and we punch fingers up to keep your elbow in and twist on the end. When it's faster, relax and tense on the end, getting your hips to rotate as well. Okay, now then we did the longer version of that. If we come down into Shikurachi, this lower stance, and we did the pivot and punch. that makes the punch longer and generates more power because you're turning your hips more. Okay? Then we also went through a third way of doing that punch was from this position, that Motodachi, doing a backhand punch. You would step and still pivot this hip, 
but instead of stopping there, you pull it all the way back. So punch and pull back. This one here, making sure you keep that front hand up to protect your face. So there were the three ways that we went through of how to draw, uh, deliver a punch. There were also a few blocks that we went through as well. There was the basic block that we did in the first lesson for protecting your head. Cross and block, cross and block. This upper block, I touched on it really quickly in one of the videos, this middle block as well, where you go underneath and around. Um, you may have been able to pick that one up, but otherwise there were a couple of other blocks that we did from this position. Nagashi okay, where we're stepping back, coming across, kind of like clapping, but just with one hand and a little twist with your wrist. Then there was the lower block as well, that you can do with your hand closed, or you can do with your hand open, and it's good to have this other hand come up to protect your face as well at the same time, if you can manage that one. Um, now, we've also gone through some footwork. So uh, we were in this stance before, we went through having it forward and back, and side to side, and to switch. So we can do all of those from the other foot in front, and then it's good to randomize, so you can do all of those things. Uh, we also did the more sta uh, traditional, stable kind of stances. We did this short step, boom. So you've got back foot pointing forward, front heel kicked out to the side, and grip. Straighten, step, heel out, grip. There was that one. And then there was deep lunging stance, which is a bigger step, in and out, that C shape. Front knee bent, back leg locked, hips to the front and feet flat, in and out, which you can do backwards as well. And we went through Shikurachi, our lower stance, with both knees bent, feet flat, and trying to squeeze your knees back. Again, we can do that stepping backwards, very useful for throws and takedowns and things like that. Um, we also went through some self-defense stuff. So the self-defense stuff, we went through the shoulder pushes. So we had the person who's in front of us, push on one shoulder, pull on the other shoulder, push and back away, okay? And we also had the wrist grabs. If somebody grabs you on the wrist, circle, circle. I can circle and push. I can also elbow in and answer the phone. A couple of, and if you needed to, you could be pushing with the other hand as well on that one. We also went through the choke from the front. I need to just hoik the shoulder up and twist. Shoulder up and twist. Then we also went through the kata. Kata, so the pattern that you perform by yourself. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We went through those six steps. Uh, and then we also went through the things that we went through today. So the roundhouse kick, this one, remembering to turn that supporting foot. I think that's one of the most important things. We also went through the break fall, how to fall down, and the technical stand up, how to stand up and get away from a person. Uh, and lastly, we went through the takedown. So if you're gonna step around, destabilize, leg and arm to throw. So hopefully this is giving you, like I say, an introduction into karate. Hopefully it will show you the scope that you have. There's so many more things to learn. Um, the good thing about karate is you never finished. I've been doing karate for about 30 years. I'm nowhere near finished yet. There's still heaps more that I can be learning as well. So I hope you guys have enjoyed these videos. Thank you very much for giving me the, uh, me the opportunity to do these. And I look forward to maybe meeting you in person someday. Otherwise, good luck with your training. And I will see you later. We battle each other. All together. Oz. Thank you very much.